This is the Sports Timeout Podcast with Tony Caranco, Tristan Howe, and your host, Wes Underwood. That time again, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Timeout Podcast brought to you by Jefferson's and Kraken Cajun Seafood House in Joplin. If you want some fresh Cajun, head on over to Kraken Cajun Seafood House in Joplin. And uh, it's across the street from Moe's on Main Street. And if you're in the mood for some wings, head to Jefferson's behind Books a Million on Range Line, West Underwood, alongside Tony and Tristan. And uh, welcome back in, fellas. And uh, well, man, more rain today. It just doesn't stop, does it? Definitely not. Nope. <laughs> Good thing uh, y'all got that mowing done yesterday, Tristan. And uh, I got mine out of the way, too. Tony, you get yours out of the way? <laughs> No, I'm usually held to a higher standard because I'm Mexican to mow my lawn, but okay. <laughs> but no, I, I didn't get to mow. It'll be done at some point this week. All right, well, higher to standard, a <laughs> uh, good thing to start with there, and we'll talk NFL, and uh, Patrick Mahomes finally opens up about the uh, Tyree Kill trade. He was stunned, but he knew it was a possibility, also stating that he didn't want him to leave which, well, duh, I mean, who would? But he's also happy for him, and uh, he says that they have to keep rolling. What are your all's thoughts here? Tony, we'll start with you since you're such a Mahomes fan. Um, I mean, I, I guess that's a pretty fair statement to make. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of, you know, what ifs before, you know, this preseason, but, you know, it happened pretty early. You know, they're going to be able to, you know, maybe pick somebody up in the draft. Yeah. They're going to, you know, or a few people up in the draft where they, they need, you know, help at. Ultimately, uh, that guy was, you know, I didn't think he was, I didn't think Tyreek deserves all that money, but good for him. But at the, the end of the day, he does pull a lot of coverage because he was very, very explosive. Yeah. I just don't think he's super reliable. I think he proved that, you know, at the last Super Bowl they went where, you know, he kept, kept dropping passes. It wasn't just him, but you know, he's explosive. I feel like you and I are the only ones who kind of agree on that. I, I, I've actually, I, I've, t- I've had that conversation with a few people that he's, he's a great player and he's yeah. very fun to watch whenever he performs. He just doesn't always perform. Yeah. And um, he's also getting up there in age. So I think it's, uh, I mean, I know he's, you know, still relatively young, you know, relative to a lot of people, but Ultimately, as a wide receiver, you know, you can only be so good for so long before you start to deteriorate a little bit. There's so, your I think that's a fair assessment to make, and I think he'll always be a chief, you know, at the end of the day. True. Tristan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tony ma- made a very fair point. Honestly, I 100% agree. Um, you know, he is very explosive, and he gets a lot of credit for a lot of the good things he does. But, you know, a lot of people don't touch base on the fact that, you know, he does drop – uh, he does drop passes in crucial situations. Um, you know, I'm sure there was a time where he dropped a, a – what, what's my camera doing? Anyways, um, but uh, to touch on a point I'm about to make, you know, may, you know, I feel like Patrick Mahomes is really going to feel the, uh, the uh, effects of, you know, his wife being such a distraction – last season and I think uh Tyreek Hill is the Tyreek Hill situation is a big uh all right all right let's not go there distraction distraction continue continue <laughs> but um you know he he has lost his uh, scapegoat pretty much um Tyreek Hill is a player that gets you out of tough uh, situations even though you know what I said before uh, but he he can be clutch in certain situations, and he's lost that explosiveness as one of the top wide receivers. So, um, you know, Kelsey's going to get a lot of touches this upcoming season because of that. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't hurt him too bad. I hope he <clears throat> realizes what's on the plate for him. Yeah, you got Juju Smith-Schuster, and yeah, without his scantling sure there, did. and a few more guys coming in. Josh Gordon looks good. He looks good and yeah. getting reps with Mahomes right now. So we'll see what's yeah. on the table for Josh Gordon. I mean, he's healthy now. Yeah, Tony? Well, I was going to say, you know, kind of to work on what Tristan said, you know, with Kelsey getting a lot more touches, 
you know, <laughs> he could possibly get injured. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I don't like the Chiefs, but obviously I don't wish uh, no, no malicious things to happen against them. You know, they need to find somebody where somebody needs to step up, you know, whether it be in Juju or uh, Lee, somebody needs to step up ultimately. Otherwise, you're going to out, you know, your the workhorse is going to be Travis Kelsey. And, you know, we yeah. don't want him getting getting injured at the end of the day. How do you, how do you feel about Terrell Owens? Well, let's go ahead and move on to this uh, next up. In the almost NFL, Terrell Owens is uh, <laughs> making a comeback in fan-controlled football, kind of like arena football. Owens scored a touchdown late in the game, but he said he felt all right, needed a little bit more work, obviously, with his quarterback's timing and everything. But then he later said he had seven games left to go. And, uh, well, do you guys think this means anything for the 48-year-old? I mean, if he's successful, why not take – a chance on him i mean it's kind of like signing an ab just a little bit older tony yeah um man i don't know if he's even you know people you know football comes to an end for everybody at some yeah. point and i think that's i think he's just having a hard time retiring you know and i'm sure you know those were some really good days that he that he lived in the past and i mean it, it's I just the way he was let go that that's what he probably has a problem with yeah, and, she's, and so I think he needs some sort of closure, you know. You know, maybe he balls out, and you know, a forty-eight year old, you know, wide receiver, you know, he comes out and you know performs, you know, you know maybe gets one or two touches a game where he performs a little bit, but then you again we run into the risk of injury with him being so old, you know, his body's not only going to do so much for him to recover, you know, there's there's level of testosterone, and, and you know. The, all those things are going to play a huge factor for him. And ultimately I don't want him to get hurt. And I don't know though. I mean, he, he kept up with DK Metcalf and Tyree kill in their little race they had. So, I mean, he was just well, shortly behind T Tyreek and huh? Well, I mean, he's a freak of nature. He's <laughs> a freak of nature. Like I'm not saying he's not a great athlete. He's obviously going to be a great athlete, arguably one of the best receivers in, yeah. in the history of the NFL. Uh, I just think that, you know, him being as old as he is, naturally he's just not going to recover as fast as he would have if he would have been 25, 30 years old. Yeah. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe, you know, he's on some sort of treatments when, you know, him having a little bit of money, I'm sure he has money to undergo treatments where, you know, basically he gets replenished like he's like like 20 or 30 and maybe he performs very well. Tristan, former cowboy here, do you like the thoughts of him coming back or should he stay done? Um, you know, I think, I think, uh, Tony made a really, really good point. Um, you know, sometimes people don't know when to hang it up and, you know, being 48, uh, you know, Tom Brady can do it, but that's Tom Brady. And, um, you know, I guess go with what you want to do, but I mean, I hope he doesn't try and come back into the NFL because I really don't think he could do it. Um, you know, at, when I was when I was younger, it was always fun watching Terrell Owens. But I mean, at the same time, you kind of got to grow up and you know just hang it up, man. Just move on to something better. Uh, if you've still got it, great. But you know, a lot of people like me aren't going to have a lot of confidence in you when you're 48 years old trying to make a comeback. So um, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan, but I guess it is what it is. So okay. really, the question should be: Could he out route? You know somebody 10 times a game you know him getting on the field 10 times per game where he's pulling some coverage you know could he still you know out route somebody you just you know you know you said that he kept up with Tyreek Hill and DK Metcalf yeah. who both are very fast people yeah you know if he can out out route you know seven out of the ten even five out of the ten times that he's out there a game you know, this is just hypothetically speaking, if he was in the NFL, if he could hypothetically outroute them five out of 10 times, I mean, that's a guy who's pulling a lot of coverage, you know, somebody with a lot of experience, yeah. somebody that can, you know, not only just, not only just perform well for uh, the team, but can bring up the younger generation for whoever team ends up picking them up. This is all hypothetical, obviously. Um, but I think having somebody like him around, would be very good for the team in general not just as, a, as an athlete 
you know, from an athlete perspective, but a coaching perspective as well. And also to kind of, also to kind of touch on that too, is that, um, you know, I kind of, I kind of wanted to make this point, um, you know, anybody can go through a quick 30, 30, 45 minute workout. Um, but if he, the question is, is can he do it for 60 minutes and, you know, kind of to go off what Tony said earlier, I he mean, does play soccer with Ocho Cinco. So, yeah, I mean, could, could he do it? We don't know. Um, you know, I'd like to think he could, but I mean, realistically, I just don't think he can. Okay. And uh, well, lastly, in the NFL, we talked the tragic loss of Dwayne Haskins and uh, it was a horrible incident. Prayers go out to the guy's family and friends and teammates. And, uh, but Tony, you kind of have a story here that goes beyond that. I mean, what really happened with Adam Schefter? What, what did you see on that? What, what did you kind of dissect from this? So, um, so he, we, we all know that Dwayne Haskins had that bad incident and whatnot. And initially, you know, Adam Schefter is one of those guys that, you know, he, he's like the first person to let everybody know about anything in regards to, uh, at least, at least in the NFL. Um, so he tweeted out, he, he, he tweeted this first and they ended up deleting it and then uh, tweeting something else very similar to what he said, but not as bad. So Dwayne Haskins, a standout at Ohio State for struggling to catch on Washington and Pittsburgh in the NFL, died this morning when he got hit by a car in South Florida. Per his agent, Cedric Saunders, Haskins would have turned 25 years old on May 3rd. So to me, you know, it was kind of, you know, it was kind of badly worded, you know, to put it lightly, um, where, you know, he's saying, you know, he basically said he wasn't a good quarterback or he struggled at Washington and he struggled yeah. at Pittsburgh. And to me, that's, you know, you know, very uh, distasteful, you know, and uh, several of the athletes thought so as well. Lamar Jackson being one of them. Um, I don't know exactly what he said, but part, part of what they said is like, you know, they just view us as something to make money, money on. And, you know, we're just, we're just part of this Gene, you know, we're not we're not even human in their eyes, you know, talking about what he said. And and I mean, it's, you know, not that guy, first, it's, it's not his first one like this. He pre broke the Tom Brady news, then everybody else kind of went haywire on that, even Tom Brady's dad, because it's like, well, that's not your story to tell, bro, kind of thing like that. But he he said that wasn't on Tom's mind and things like that. Then he retired, then he unretired. I think he retired just to be like, okay. And then came back out of that retirement, like, okay, yeah, I, I didn't really want to, but I kind of went that way. I was thinking that, but no, I'm not really mentally there, but no one really gave me time to think kind of thing. So, and I mean, I feel like Adam Schefter could kind of go ahead and give it a career here and be America's number one hero instead of sports enemy right now. And just kind of take a break yeah. from all this because it seems like he's pretty stressed out. Yeah, well, and I think he, he should have he should have definitely worded it better, and I yeah. I can't I can't speak for his intentions behind you know what he you know was trying to get across. Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't really know much about Dwayne Haskins, you know, before the incident happened, and you know, but even then, you know, it's still he's still human. He had, he has parents and family, and you know, and Ohio State. Yeah, I know. I know he went to Ohio State. Um, you know, he, he you know he was he was good there, but yeah. ultimately, I didn't know about him. And again, but you know, my thoughts and you know, my condolences go to his family. Yeah. Ultimately, you know, that's a loss at the end of the day for them. You know, you know, screw what the team lost. You know, yeah, not only did they lose a teammate, but ultimately, you know, they lost a friend, a human, a brother. You know, you know, potential father. You know, they lost a lot you know, more than just a teammate that day. So that's unfortunate. And the way that he worded it was just very distasteful. You know, he should do better. He knows better. Um, you know, yeah. but I guess that's and, how he gets in the eye of the media is by being controversial. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, you could, you could have made that post so much better just by listing that he was an, uh, he was a standout at Ohio State. Yeah. He, I don't, I don't remember what round he was drafted in, but you know what round he was drafted into what team, and leave it at that. I mean, 
I've, I, yeah, I felt like it was kind of a snarky, disrespectful uh, tweet. Um, yeah. You know, just to kind of, I mean, you're supposed you're supposed to remember people for you know the good things that they did and what they were most known for and all of that. You know, you can't you can't just you know drop kind of a bombshell like that on people like, oh, he wasn't a very good quarterback, but hey, he died at twenty whatever age it was. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty disrespectful and coming from Adam Schefter himself, it was, um, you know, it, it kind of hurt to hear because, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm a fan of Adam Schefter and his, uh, way of broadcasting and, uh, for him to say something like that, it was just, you know, like Tony said, it was distasteful. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and leave the NFL and, uh, talk draft next week for sure. But now it's time to go to the MLB and we talk Jake Arietta as he uh, finally calls it quits. The 36-year-old does this after 12 seasons. Cy Young winner, World Series champion uh, back in 2015-2016. Uh, also went 25-1 and one in that stretch, which was incredible, uh, with two no-nos in that. And, uh, man, you all think it was the right move for him? I mean, personally... I really do think that it was a good move for Arietta. I mean, just a couple last couple seasons, just really horrid, but uh, Tristan will go you here. Yeah. So yeah, like you were saying, Wes, uh, last season, he was uh, five and 14 with a 7.39 ERA. And yeah. um, anybody who's anybody knows that that is not very good. And a uh, former world series champion, um, you know, there's, there comes a time and I'm sure Tony can attest to this too, that there comes a time in every athlete's life where, you know, there's the certain thing that clicks in your head that says, Hey, I'm done. I, you know, I, I can't do it no more. And for me, it was injury related to when, to where I was kind of forced out of the game. But, uh, at the same time, a lot of people go through different ways of expressing that. And after 12 seasons, I can say that he has accomplished a lot more than what most people would. So if he's fine with retire, if he's fine with retiring, then, you know, hats off to him. Um, you know, Chicago being Chicago, I'm sure he's always got a place there. So um, that's really all I've got to say about that one. Yeah. Yeah. They tweeted yesterday that he will go down as one of the greatest in history. And I, I mean, yeah. Yep. So And 36 so years old. Thir- yeah. Yeah, it's a good uh, time to hang it up. You know, yeah, Tristan saying what he said. You know, every athlete knows when it's when when he's done. You know, at some point, you know, you want he should have retired. You know, probably about a year ago, a year and a half ago. You know, before you know he had a bad season, but you know that's a little bit of extra money in his pocket, so why not? Okay. I'm just saying more for his legacy. Uh, but no one's you know. No one's going to dog him on that anyways because, you know, he had a very good career. You know, there's he doesn't have anything else to prove. He's done. He made his money. He took care of his family. Yep. And, you know, he, t- he took, took care of his franchise. Ultimately, I think it's a good move for him. All right. And next up, we talk uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. And uh, he started his assignment in AAA yesterday. The Braves are hopeful of a return on May 6th. Do you guys think he should return to play or do you think he should take it easy for now? I mean, it was an ACL injury. So uh, my opinion here, I think he should definitely take it easy, but uh, we'll go Tristan and then Tony. Yeah. So with, with an ACL injury like that, um, it's very, very easy to, you know, re-injure that, re-tear that. So, and playing baseball, you know, you've got 160 some games uh, plus games in a whole entire season. So, I mean, risk risk a few more games to make sure you come back healthy uh, to go the rest of the stretch on. Uh, that would be the best decision. So yeah, I'm with I'm with you, Wes. I think you should definitely take it easy. Yeah, Tony. So how long was it since he had his injury? I don't. Uh, I don't... Playoff, so around October. They went so, to the World Series, so I think around then. October. Yeah, I mean, it's only been what five months. Yeah, he's ahead yeah. of schedule. Yeah, well, there's no such thing as being ahead of schedule, man. Nope. You know, <laughs> not with that injury. There, 
No, you know? because at the end, at the end of the day, it's not like an exterior injury where like, you know, like oh, just put some some ointment on it. You know, it'll recover a little bit faster. There's no such thing as putting ointment on his ACL. I tore my ACL back in high school. You know, it's it's way too soon. Six months is like, you know, what they they expect now. I'm sure he's pretty close to being up to full speed. You know, but there's no need to rush it. You know, if if anything happens to him, you know, before the six month mark, that's 100 percent on him. You know, after that six month mark. You know, he's very less likely to, you know, re-injure it. You know, he, he may not. He may not injure it again, but there's no there's no need to to risk it. May, May you know? 6 is the estimated comeback time there, so we'll, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on that, but. So, um, at that point, it'll, it'll be six months. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. He, so, I mean, he, you know, if he wants to come back right at six months, great. I remember whenever I tore mine, you know, I went. As soon as they told me I was cleared, I went straight into like doing full workouts and it was miserable. I was yeah. very, very miserable for the, the next couple of months. And, uh, you know, but, you know, I came back and I was able to, you know, still play in college and whatnot. And, but it's, it's not an easy injury to go through and, you know, and try to c- come back from because you'll never end up being the same. That's for sure. Yeah. And also, and also to kind of touch on that too, um, you know, Ronald Acuna Jr. with the power that he's got behind the plate. I mean, he really uh, – he can't really risk uh, re-injuring that again because, like I said before, it is a really long season. And he's um, one one of the big-name power hitters in the league. So, um, I again, yeah, definitely take it easy. Got to – In the season oh, – go ahead. No, you're good. I was going to say the season is really long anyways. Yeah. Right. You know, like it's like there's no rush, you know, to have them an extra, you know, I don't know how many games they play in a month. How many games would you say? Man, man average in a month? around 20, 25. Yeah. Out of, you know, hunt, you know, a few hundred games they play in a season. Yeah. You know, there's, I don't think he's going to make that big of a difference for them, anyways. Uh, you know, if, he, if he's not at his best, you know, he, he may be just more of a liability to the team and he, you know, his knees a liability to himself. There's just no, there's no reward, you know, big enough right now. You know, if you're telling me maybe the playoffs where he like just, you know, he tore like two months ago and he's trying to, you know, it's October and he's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, come back at that point, you know, okay, well, I kind of get it. There's a lot on the line, but not right now. Yeah. And lastly, we'll go ahead and uh, give our thoughts on the NBA playoffs here. We'll jump over to the NBA. And, I mean, so far, the Heat and the Hawks, that looks like a fun series. Celtics and the Nets, that could get really ugly. I mean, <laughs> really, really ugly. Dirt, dirty birds flying everywhere there. Um, Bucks and the Bulls, they could go seven. And, I mean, we'll see after game two. And Raptors and 76ers, I see Philly flying there. Shun Suns the shuns I'll, I'll ignore them for the rest of the season um <laughs> suns should fly in the west but the pelicans could make it fun t wolves look okay that'd be a fun series to watch there and uh i i think the warriors went out and the jazz and the mavs could go seven but i do think the warriors will win straight out seven seven game series there uh in the west it should be the suns and the Warriors, and uh, in the East, it should be Philly, and whoever wins Chicago-Milwaukee, I think that will be what it will be, and the champion, I'll wait till next week, I'll wait till next week to see uh, who I think will be the champion, I want a full week of play out of these guys before I give my champion here, but uh, you guys see anything else there, Uh, any, any potential champions out of this bunch right now, or you guys ready to just watch some basketball, Tony? Yeah, I'm ready to watch some basketball. Uh, but I, I'm actually like agreeing 100 percent with what you said. Um, I think it'll be the Warriors and the Suns, and, and I th- but I think it'll be Milwaukee and uh, in in Philly. Okay, that's 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 what I'm going with on the East. Justin, that one was steep, Tony. <laughs> uh, that? That, that was steep. Uh, well. I mean, with, jo- with Joel Embiid, uh, Philly does have a really good chance. Um, you know, Toronto, 
you know, they're down, they're down two nothing right now. And I mean, we've seen it happen before, but being up two Oh, uh, that usually gives them a pretty good chance to go all the way. Um, but that's not the surprise games that I'm looking at right here. I think, I think I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with Miami. I think Miami's going to, uh, I think Miami's got a really good chance to go all the way. And right, right now the they only lead. ones. Right, and well, and uh, Miami's leading the Hawks one, one, nothing right now. So I think, I think at least they get to the next round and probably all the way. I'm not for sure. Uh, Tony, I think his number one pick will be the Baylor bears. Um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes there, but <laughs> Yeah, That's, yeah, I, I can. You're never gonna recover from it. that one, Tristan. Yeah, no, I'm not, not, not going to let you live that one down. That was a one and done. That was really bad. That that's why no. I can't live down. But I'll I'll meet right. myself. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, give me give me next week, and then I'll see where I stand. Um, the Heat very well could. The Heat very well could. So. We will now head into the local sports update brought to you by Trackside Burgers. Go check them out today and get the streetcar number 60. And we'll start with Web City in baseball. And they will be on the road Thursday the 21st at Branson with a game at 4.30. Then they will also travel to play Francis Howell at 9 a.m. and Rockbridge at 11 on Saturday the 23rd. As for Joplin, they will head to Nixa on Thursday the 21st and then next we have neosho they will head to a tournament this week on i believe friday and maybe thursday um we'll, we'll look at their schedule here again um and keep updated on their twitter uh next up we have carthage they will play thursday the 21st also and we'll travel to republic game is set for 4 30 p.m and then they will head out to play Parkview and Logan Rogersville this Saturday. And lastly, we have Carl Junction. They will head to Willard on Thursday and play at 4.30 p.m. And then on Friday, they will head to Pittsburgh High School with first pitch set for 4.30 p.m. as well. And uh, local, co or local college baseball, yes, is up next. And high school baseball is something to watch right now. All the teams are playing fairly well so get out there support your local teams and get things going if you've got nothing to do because they're fun to watch these, these kids put in a lot of hard work so just get out there and support them and uh well on that note we'll go ahead and head into the two minute warning brought to you by hot stone pizzeria coming to web city this month i believe within the next week and uh they, they look they look really nice inside so hopefully y'all can get out there and get some of that pizza and uh, well, in the two minute warning this week, Southern baseball will head to Northeastern State in Oklahoma for a three game stand starting Friday at 2 p.m. And then they will play Saturday at 2 p.m. as well. And Sunday they will play at 1 p.m. As for Pitt State, they head to Wichita to face off against the Jets of Newman. And uh, games begin Friday at 3, Saturday at 3, and Sunday at 1 p.m. as well. And then as for softball, Missouri Southern will hit the road this weekend for a two double header set up here and uh, one Friday, the 22nd at 2 p.m. with game two to follow at Northwest Missouri. And then Saturday, the 23rd at Missouri Western with game one at 1 p.m. and game two to follow Then for Pitt State. They will once again be opposite as Friday. They will travel to Missouri Western to play in a doubleheader beginning at 3 p.m. with game two to follow. And Saturday, they will head to Northwest Missouri to be in a doubleheader as well. So that game will begin at noon and game two will follow. So, and of course, all these games are pending due to the weather and the current and fluid COVID-19 situation. So tune into each team's social media pages for times and updates and well music's here again fellas and another episode comes to an end for tony tristan and myself guys have a great and safe weekend enjoy some sports get out there watch some baseball uh catch some action of some kind this weekend whether it's movies or whatnot but should be a good weekend um i think the rain's heading out of the forecast this weekend but we'll see it just sticks around so 
Hope you guys can make it to one of these games. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good and safe weekend. Take care. Thank you, sir. You too. Hey, yep.